All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 89 of 808 Scene. And today we got the band Gandala. Gandala? Gandala. Gondola? Gondola. Thank you for <laughs> correcting me. But, um, you know, thanks thanks for thanks for playing a set, guys. And uh, so can everybody introduce themselves one by one and what instrument you play? I'm Adam. I play drums. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Paul, oh, I play guitar. Uh, I'm Ray, I play guitar. Woo! I'm Jason, I play bass. Uh, I'm Grace, I play whatever instrument they decide to make me play <laughs> that day. <laughs> Primarily the Omnichord, which is currently broken, but I'm also vocals. Okay, so uh, real quick, funny story before we even really start this, you know, that, that day when you guys showed up, you know, I saw this, this, this truck pull up in our loading zone. I saw some, saw some handsome dude come out of the truck and I, I thought it was Adam, but I guess it was Jason. Give him a big hug. I know, it was awesome. It was that was great funny. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, this guy's fucking really, he's a really <laughs> dude, man. I was like, this guy's cool. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm like, oh. Yeah, we just we, we just give love to everybody. I'm sure it happens a lot, right, when you guys are together. Oh, yeah. It does. <laughs> when they're not together. <laughs> Even especially when they're not together. <laughs> so how did you guys form and when did you guys form this band? Yeah, it's been kind of like a, an amoeba the whole time. I mean, um, me and Adam kind of, I guess, are like the were, were there first and then Paul was kind of flexing in and out. He had a bunch of other bands, and then Paul <laughs> kind of joined. I feel like he kind of joined us at one point, and then Gracie was the late last. Oh no, second to last, and then Ray. It just you know, I mean, in the beginning we were kind of just like letting any, anybody come just jam with us, you know, and then it just I don't know, it just kind of like. Uh, stuff together eventually <laughs> cerebral thing how, how would you guys describe your music like what, what kind of genre is this i mean it's definitely not something i'm like really used to but man when you guys played i i, I thought it was the best set of the day just so you guys know that's very kind of you <laughs> thank you that's super nice to hear i don't know i'd say our music is a little bit hypnotic maybe it takes you someplace that's kind of the only thing I can think to say about it, but I don't know what genre it fits exactly. Grace categorized at one time. Um, oh yeah, what did I call it? I, could, I can't even remember. It was it was orchestral and uh, Kesha. Yeah. Orchestral. It was like orchestral, orchestral something. Yeah. Orchestral doom. It's cinematic, I think. Cinematic, but, yes. Yeah. I used to have a lot more operatic elements to it too but I, I don't really use my voice in a way where it's like traditional vocals or I'm singing lyrics. Um, I, I kind of tend to layer my voice in, in a weird way where I think even the sound guys were having a difficult time being like, wait, you want to sound like you're drenched in reverb? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so so how, can you explain to us what you were doing that day, Grace? It was. I just saw like a lot of pedals on the ground. And so what were you doing with the pedals? I basically hook up guitar pedals and like vocal pedals to my voice and make noises. And then I use my voice and um, samples of my voice as, as an instrument. Wow. So you just can to make different, different sounds. <laughs> so you can try like one metal, metal zone two in that. <laughs> no clue what that means. <laughs> <laughs> these, these guitar players know. <laughs> it's like our standard st standard pedal when we're kids. Super standard. <laughs> <laughs> so Ray, when you guys were playing the set, I was totally like taken back because, you know, I was expecting you to play the guitar more, but you know, I just kept on seeing you go to the ground to your pedals, and I was like talking to my crew on the intercoms or on the, our headsets, and like, yo, something wrong with this stuff. Keep on going to those pedals. Should we just stop this? Should we stop this or what? Should we cut, retake? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? But I mean, you know, you know, in the heat of passion on that day, I couldn't really understand what you were doing and hearing it. But you know, in playback, when I was listening, like, 
oh that's that's, that's what fucking Ray was doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> same yeah it's just kind of the same way like how uh, Gracie like I, I just in, in this well with, when jamming with like everyone here I feel like with the guitar or like I use the guitar in a different way and I want to like do the same like or do like layers and add textures to the to the sound of what everyone's putting down you know so for me it's a lot different than what I've played in other bands where it's like the pop punk bands hardcore bands you know very guitar driven or whatever and then, in this band, I can kind of sit back and just like, you know, feel what the feel what the music is bringing on, and then try to add to it as best I can, like some textures. Or, I always like to say textures because that's what I feel like it is. You know, like something, something going, or something. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ray are similar in that sense too, because mm -hmm. we try to keep it like atmospheric and textural, as he said.
I feel like I just play whatever I hear what they're playing, you know, like either with Jay or Ray, you know, I know Ray's going to do all that textural stuff, which is fucking super sick. So I'm, I like, I just playing more grittier stuff or that's what I feel like I'm trying to do, like a little bit more grittier stuff with a, a little bit more textures, but you know, I know Ray's going to bust up some fucking crazy shit with his pedals and all the textures and then Jay and Adam and Grace, it's, it's going to be good. So I just kind of work off of them basically when we get together and write stuff. Oh, that's cool. So, so when you guys do practice, like who starts it? Cause I, I noticed it's like, it just, Ooh. you know, when I just saw you guys playing, it just starts, it just looked like maybe just Adam started playing and then everybody just yeah. kicked in, right? I mean, like, like how, how, how does you guys process work? Like during that, like when you guys write a song then? Oh, we love it's to say Jay. that we get like super blazed and then we work it out. <laughs> <laughs> we get, we pull inspiration from where we can. And let it yeah. There somewhere. you go, that's a better <laughs> So, so Adam, like dur- during the set, I noticed like y- y- it just felt like you were playing drums for like a straight, like 45 minutes straight with no stopping. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like if you just, you know, that just watch and play the whole time. Exactly. So like with your drumming style, like who, who, who are, who are your favorite drummers? Uh, like, I'd say Brian, Bar- I think his name is Brian Barker from Minor Threat was my first favorite drummer. Oh, wow. Guy's fast and you can just, just blast forever. And then, um. The guy from Deerhoof is amazing. Deerhoof? Uh, I don't know his name, but he's insane. And then he's just the most minimal setup, but he gets the biggest sounds out of it. And extremely creative. Um, and then I guess maybe Gene Krupa was my first favorite drummer, like the old jazz guy. Oh, he's wow. just chaotic. But I like the African stuff too, because when you can develop off time rhythms and turn it into a kind of a loop that's sort of what we try to do and well that's what i try to do and it seems to work out pretty well but i'd say jay is the the dominant force in the songwriting land <laughs> as oh. far as gondola goes definitely so so jason yeah. so so what are you, your influences then i mean i grew up playing a lot of like metal and hardcore and stuff like that and um then got into like you know i don't uh, indie Three. rock and grunge stuff, you know, just from other people. And when I moved to Philly, I got in like a, I met a whole nother group of people, kind of, kind of Tom Waits and Aww. Modest Mouse are uh, huge uh, for me when I was back in the day. And, you know, I like a lot of music, so so a lot of different stuff. But, uh, yeah, bass players, I mean, there's so many good bass players. Uh, I mean, it's, it's impressive when you see like a bass player like you know that shreds too but it's really awesome too when the bass player can like sit in the pocket too and that's mm-hmm. hard to do you know um i don't know yeah I like a lot of music what I, what I wanted to say something about uh paul when paul's playing it kind of reminds me a little bit of the way the guitar player and in interpol kind of interact with the music mm-hmm. it's kind of like it's like a, you know Incapated or something. Like, oh, <laughs> slow down. Syncopated. Slow down. Like, how how try to do that again? How how? Yeah, like, <laughs> <I guess>. <laughs> <laughs> so so Grace, well, what are your influences? Um, gosh, similarly, I listen to like a lot of music, but. Uh, when we first started playing we had a sound that was very um, we had a lot of Dungeons and Dragons vibes at first (laughs) it was like very like very like dark very like not really on this in the same uh, realm but like old and familiar but like and then it as far as like what I try to contribute um there are certain songs where I sing, but it's in a language that not even I understand. So it's it's very much so like Sigur Rós oh. um, in that sense. But sound-wise, I'd like to say 
me personally in my own music because I'm definitely more so like singer songwriter I do I have like my own project that I do and I try to I try to lean very um Korea Brecken from Moom the Icelandic band and um I mean I guess broadcast sure broadcast and grouper and um Coco Rosie stuff like that just just weird women <laughs> awesome. So I mean, we don't really have to ask what Ray's influences are because we definitely know 311. You know, like fully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm down, down, boy. No, but serious. Okay, so Ray, so Ray, what, what, what are your musical influences? What, what bands? What, what artists? Um, <laughs> like, I mean. Kandiria, I, I, I know I just talked with uh, some of the guys, like Kandiria is one of my yeah. favorite all-time bands ever, because um, just how musically diverse they are, you know, they're a band out of Brooklyn and they play jazz, death metal, hardcore, and they blend it all together, um, hip-hop and uh, like like punk hardcore, um, and then from everything, like everything else, like I listen to a lot of the weird stuff, you know, definitely a lot of Moon, a lot of uh, Animal Collective, a lot of weird avant-garde yes, stuff, Animal you Collective. know, and so... Uh, like a- anything like pop and anti-pop, I guess you know. So I guess that's why it's yeah. Such a rebel, huh? <laughs> <laughs>
I, I know Ray from the past and all that, and I know Paul's been in tons of bands, and I'm sure Adam has, but like, Ray, you, you've been in so many <laughs> bands. Can, what, what bands were you in the scene over here? Oh, man. Um, I guess the one that was in the scene first was like Neurovoid. I joined, I joined the homies there, and I met a lot of people through that. Then I was in Two Face Four um, for a, like a long time. Pimpbot, I was in a ska band. They taught me how to play right. saxophone. Yeah. Oh my god, you were Pimpbot. Get up, pick it up. Oh my god, I feel yeah. super old. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool one to be in. Like that one was interesting because it was like it taught me like they taught me about like not just forming a band, but like just you know being with friends or whatever in your band. You know, like Aww. I was just hanging around at practice because my guitarist Tom who was also in Two Face Four was in Pimpot. And then they're just like, well, we need a saxophone player. And they're like, do you want to play saxophone? I guess, you know? And they're like, and they taught me that like, they'd rather play with somebody that they know and they gel with than like try to find somebody else to play saxophone and then try to gel with them, you know? So it was kind of cool. They like took me under their wing or whatever and we did that. Got to see some cool stuff. Um, after that, what, Beeman? Adam and I formed Beeman. Yeah. Hot punk, yeah. Hot punk yeah. band. And then we were in um, Thanks after that, which was a little, um, oh yeah, little little post post punk, which kind of fit because Demon was pop punk, and I was a little like two guys in band together. Yeah, and then now we're with Kevin Gondola. All right, so yeah. awesome. I think so Paul's awesome. been in way more bands than me though. Got star I know, damage too though. Oh. <laughs> we star damage though. Let's hear there Paul's God. resume. Oh. What's his resume? Ah. The bands? Oh yes, go. Uh, like if I can remember, man. Um, it's definitely like Choda, then it could be, uh, man, I might not even remember this list already, man. <laughs> Let's see, it was, uh, oh my god, what's the band with Eric and, um, uh, so many bands, <laughs> pretty much. It says Clones, it. I had, you know, wow. Pterodactyl, I played in, um, and I don't know. I don't. I don't even want to list the lists. It's, <laughs> yeah. Okay, how, how about the bands you play in now? Like, then. I just. I, to, oh, yeah. I, just to, I honestly wanted to just play with like, basically, yeah, my friends. Like, I never played music with Ray, Jay, Adam, or Grace ever. I've all seen them play music, and I was like, everything you do is awesome. I was like, oh, like, you know, I would love to play in their band or in a band with them. So it just gelled together, and here we are. I feel like it's awesome. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, so Adam, um, you're in Beeman. So, what what other bands were you part of in our scene? Um, <laughs> first was Narwhal, and then Beeman. A band called Thanks, also with Ray Beeman and Thanks. Um, then with Jay, we started with um, Yvonne, our friend Yvonne, and called ourselves Howler, but we didn't do anything. And then Gondola. But in between that, with Ray also with Star Damage, our improv kind of musical project. Oh, wow. We don't play out. We just record stuff. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So, Jason, how, how, how many bands were you in in, in the scene? Oh, in Honolulu, basically, just, uh, just I played in a band called At Sea. Oh. Like, instrumental music at first and then uh some one of the members started singing it was awesome well we, i played with them for some years and then just some little side project things but uh, yeah that's it i had awesome. bands on the east coast and stuff in new york and philadelphia when i was younger just all kinds of different shit oh that's great it's great so how about you grace i mean you've been in the scene too for all these years how many bands have well, you been? Well, I'm the baby of of the group, <laughs> like by by far, to a point where I like literally would go and watch shows that all of the people in my band were in, like just wide eyed and young. I I remember um, I was super close to Ara Lalo because I started watching her in uh, Clones of the Queen. So that's that's I guess, where I met Jay. Introduce Adam. Introduce Adam. Sorry, Paul. And then I do recall um, 
I was in this band. It was like the byproduct of this uh, the symphonic black metal band Debak. But oh, yeah. um, they called ourselves. They, we called ourselves uh, Moon Occult the Sun. And I actually did a show with Jay at Etsy's um, goodbye show. And then that's like the third time I watched Etsy, and I was just like, oh man, that sucks that they're gonna be gone. Um, Pimpbot. Did you guys play at Club Palahi at all? Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> exactly. Pimpbot, they had the Oahu World Tour. Right? <laughs> and then, and then with Adam, um, I, I loved Narwhal. I loved Demon. Oh, thank you. Uh, Aww. But yeah, it was like fun to Aww. like finally be in a band with them. I had one band after uh, Moon Occult's The Sun, and that was with my best friend, Alex Devo, and it was called the No-No Spots. We had like a short stint. <laughs> we had like a short stint. I think we ended up turning into like a comedy act afterwards unintentionally because... Which is D. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. I guess so. But I do my own stuff um, under the name Transplant Patient. Oh. Spelled funny, though.
I think our music um, evolves a little bit. Like our songs, they start off as kind of like a little living organism, and then it, it just kind of evolves over the life of the song, and then you kill it. it just, right. That's because it'll never be like the same version of a song we'll play. We have the same idea. Yeah, like we don't have uh, any real structure. We just sort of we have pieces. There's, and there's then, room to breathe. Yeah, we just let it flow, you know. And however you're feeling that day, I guess it just comes out, and that's sort of that's how we do it. I don't know what other bands do now. This is definitely different than any other band I've been in, in terms of the way we practice and prepare for shows. I like to think of it as kind of like keeping the uh, uh, the song, you know, them alive, you know. I want to hammer them into something, three minute thing, into something that's like, you know, really choreographed. There's obviously a lot of advantages to that too, but I, for our music and the and the synergy that we have together, I, I really love that we've like maintained like an open format actually, where it's like there's a mode we go into and there's a vibe that we're shooting for, maybe a certain effects and everything, but you know, then it can manifest in, in a different way is uh keeps it exciting
So before we end this, and you guys want to give any shout outs to any people, your family, friends, any bands? Rako, <laughs> Rako Miyamoto for letting us borrow her, her partner. Her dad. <laughs> um, this is great. I mean, thank you, John. Yeah. Going thank you. Hey, eight oh eight scene. Yeah. Hi, mom. Well, letting us let go. You know, putting us on there. I don't want to thank anybody. That. Awesome. How about all the pets? Thank you, Everybody Sybil. Pet. All the furry animals. animals. All the furry animals. animals. So uh, before we end this, um, you guys have uh, any social media you guys want to plug so people can check you out? Hey, guys, what check us out at H.I. Gondola Instagram. <laughs> so how, how do you spell There's no music. G O. N D O L A. Correct. Point. Good job, Grace. Good job. <laughs> There's no music on there for you to. <laughs> There's a band camp, but it's. There's a band camp of our live. One set live from show pre pandemic. Pre pandemic. Slash art. But I'll link in the bio. Our first show. That, that, yeah, link in bio. Your guys' band camp uh, audio worked perfectly for my lighting designer. She loved it. And that's how she got to tweak out all the colors. Oh, yeah. And, uh, awesome. She did shout a beautiful out to her. job. She, shout yeah, out to that girl. Up. What's her name again? Her name is Anne. Anne Rule shout of Anne. Anne. Yeah, shout out to Anne. She did a great job. Oh, and, yeah. Shout out to Jenna Macy for being the slime man. Slime man. Let's go. Beep, beep, beep,